Mystère de ton esprit qui nous conduit, qui nous assiste. Nous voulons te dire merci. Ta présence dans nos vies, nous voulons te dire merci. Voilà pourquoi nous voulons élever, élever les mains en signe de gratitude, de tendre Père. Nous élevons, nous élevons, nous élevons nos mains. Une manière de dire merci, tendre Père. Élevons nos mains vers toi. Nous élevons en signe d'abondance. Nous élevons nos mains. Nous élevons nos mains. Nous élevons nos mains vers toi. Nous élevons nos âmes. Nous élevons. Que nos cœurs soient tout entiers à toi. Accorde-nous la grâce de t'offrir, de t'offrir la gratitude, de t'offrir l'honneur qui te sont. Nous élevons, nous élevons, nous élevons nos âmes vers toi. Nous élevons nos cœurs, nous élevons nos cœurs. Accorde-nous d'être tout entier à toi. Accorde-nous la grâce de t'aimer. De t'aimer comme tu nous as aimé, Père le premier. Nous élevons nos cœurs. Nous élevons nos cœurs. Ce que tu es excellent, excellent de son désir. Voilà pourquoi nos vies sont obligées d'être excellentes. Tu es glorieux, tu es glorieux, glorieux, glorieux. Nous te reconnaissons, tendre Père, digne de gloire, digne d'honneur. de la création. Alors voilà pourquoi, puisque nous sommes dans le elle a commencé comme elle a commencé. Et à la fin de ce voyage, on reconnaîtra, on reconnaîtra que tu es admirable. On reconnaîtra, Seigneur, que tes œuvres à travers nos vies sont admirables, elles seront attestées, certifiées. Admirable. Le que tu as commencé, tu ne l'as pas encore achevé. Mais lorsqu'elle sera achevée, on dira magnifique cette œuvre. Tu es magnifique. Tu es magnifique. 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 Tu es magnifique. Elle sera reconnue, Père, de tel tu es, ainsi nous sommes. 
Voilà pourquoi nos témoignages, nos vies, Seigneur, notre destinée, voilà pourquoi notre héritage n'a pas d'autre choix que de respecter le Dieu, n'a pas d'autre choix que d'être magnifique, notre histoire n'a pas d'autre choix que d'être glorieuse. Notre témoignage n'a pas d'autre option que d'être excellent. Notre témoignage n'a pas d'autre option que d'être merveilleux. Notre témoignage n'a pas d'autre option que d'être excellent. Merci à toi, à toi, à toi, à toi. Merci 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 Merci Merci, 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 c'est la bienvenue, 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 c'est la Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Merci, Père, pour le don, le don précieux du Saint-Esprit, le Paracletos. Cher Esprit de Jésus, chère Anction de Dieu, assiste-nous, inspire-nous, saisis-nous, reviens-nous, rends-nous capables de livrer, de délivrer, de proclamer ta parole avec fidélité. Merci Père d'étendre ta main sur nous. Merci de nous revêtir. Merci pendant que cette parole est envoyée, convainc nos cœurs, rends-la fluide, rends-la explicite. Télécharge le dépôt que tu as prévu pour nous aujourd'hui. Fais infiniment au-delà de ce que nous te demandons ou pensons par ta puissance qui agit en nous, Père, mais fais-nous gagner du temps. Ne nous laisse pas être détruits par le manque de connaissances. Ne nous laisse pas nous séduire nous-mêmes par des faux raisonnements. Ne nous laisse pas perdre du temps. Non, les jours sont mauvais. Notre temps sur la terre n'est rien comparé à la durée de l'éternité. Même cent ans est complètement rien insignifiant devant l'éternité. Alors, Père, nous t'implorons, le temps que nous sommes dans cette enveloppe terrestre, accorde-nous la grâce, Seigneur, de connaître la vérité, de marcher dans la vérité, la grâce de bien compter nos jours et d'appliquer nos cœurs à la sagesse et à l'obéissance à Dieu. Afin que ces voies. Alléluia. Amen, 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 amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this second watch, Father, we give you glory. There's no other one like you, Father. We come as one today and we give you glory. Thank you for being God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 Murphy. Welcome, who is there? Oh, if you are here. Good, good, good. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It's going to, um, unfortunately, I didn't get to finish it, but I'm just going to give you what I have. And next week, we do what follows. So, we're going to talk today about the choice of serving. It's pretty much interesting to say the choice of serving because sometimes it seems like serving is um is something that everybody must do you know everybody can do and it's true everybody can do it but is it that is it something that is already you know is it always a choice is it always something we choose to do so that's what we're gonna learn today 
Father, we give you praise and honor. Thank you for your presence. Teach us. Reveal things to us. Show us your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So last week, we talked about the shouts of the people. Jesus' reputation and the shout of the people. We talked about people shouting when Jesus was in front of Pilate or Herod saying, crucify him, crucify him. Give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. But then when Jesus was crucified, something happened. When Jesus was, was, was going to be crucified, let me check if you can hear me. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. When Jesus was going to be crucified, something happened. There was a man who was coming back from, I think he was coming back from a farm. Or, he, the Bible says he, he was coming back from the country. So country, we can understand a village, a farm, a place where he was walking manu manually or doing something. Maybe he was a landlord, maybe he had different land, maybe he was a, a farmer, a laborer. He, he, he was doing something like that. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 23, verse 26, that when they led him, when, when they led Jesus, when, when the soldiers were leading Jesus to, the, to Calvary, Simon of Siren, or Simon of Siren, who was coming into the city from the country, he was coming to the city, coming from the country, and placed on him, sorry, they seized him, and they placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. It's interesting. Why would they take a cross so heavy and give it to somebody I can call a merman who was just coming from, from there, from nowhere? Why would they carry such a heavy cross and give it to him? So let's break it down a little bit in order to understand what's going on here. So when the soldiers were leading Jesus to Calvary, to Golgotha, in, uh, I think it's in Hebrew or in Greek, they say Golgotha, which means Calvary. They seized, they seized meaning they forced, they forcefully obligated. They arrested and placed an obligation upon the man. The man was just coming back into the city and they seized him. They forced him. They say, you come. They didn't give him the choice. They just say, come here. They placed an obligation upon a man, a human being called Simon of Siren, of Simon of Siren. I don't know how they say it. Please correct me. They placed an obligation upon him. Now I am like, I know that God never does things like that. There's always a reason. There's always something behind it. So when we look at it, Simon of Siren, or Simon of Siren, when we go and look a little bit in the definition of Simon and of Siren, of, of, of Siren, Siren, we realize that the word Simon means the one who hears or the one who listens. And the, ones, the word siren or siren means the one who governs. He governs. He has authority. He has the power. The government. Remember, they said about Jesus that the government will rest upon his shoulder. So, they brought the one who was supposed to govern to the cross. But at the same time, another man was coming from the country. And the men had two skills that were really important, listening and governing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when Jesus was on the earth, he had, a, the, he had those two skills exactly too. He was listening a lot to people, no matter where they were coming from, no matter their background. He didn't care how they sting, how they, whatever order they had, he was just listening. And as he was listening, he was establishing the government of God. So Simon the Siren comes with those elements too in him. So as Jesus, which means God the Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Savior, was being brought out of the city to be crucified, Simon of Siren, the man who listens and governs, 
was being was coming into the city from the country. If you remember now, Jesus, where was he born? He was born in, in the country somewhere too. And came into the city after. So somebody randomly chosen had this had similarities with Jesus. As he and as he came, he had two important skills, as we say, listening and governing. And now that he had those skills, something else is being forced upon him, the cross. What does the cross represent? The cross is a representation of the sacrifice. So the man was just coming quietly. Something was being forced upon him, which is the sacrifice. So now he had listening, governing, and sacrificing upon his life. Did he ask for it? No. His parents gave him the name. I don't know if they knew that all this was upon their, their child. But did he ask for it? No. It was forcefully put upon his life. But did he refrain and say, I don't want it? No. He took it and followed. People were seeing him just as a countryman. But in that time, the, in God's plan, he wasn't just a countryman. He was somebody who, could, who had what it takes to carry the cross. And just like that, coming back from a farm, maybe Simon of, Simon of, Sir, of Sirene, of Cyrene, found himself walking behind Jesus or in this case following Jesus forcefully forcefully at first then it became something he did willfully a man who had a quiet life is now carrying the cross of the savior of the whole earth of the entire world until Calvary if you check it out, they didn't talk about Simon of Cyrene Siren after that. His assignment, his service, was carry the cross, bring Jesus to Calvary. Make sure that Jesus must not carry the cross until he gets to Calvary. Interesting. But the funny part is that Jesus, even though he wasn't carrying the cross, was being beaten up like crazy. So Simon of Cyrene, here, yeah, his role was to take over a, a burden for Jesus. You're going to tell me, how How come? If we say that Jesus is our Savior, he took everything. It's true. But the Bible shows us that when he was going at the cross, somebody delighted him from the heaviness of that cross. Because can you imagine him being beaten up and having the cross on his back too? Amen. So, Jesus took all the pain for us. It's true. But here's interesting. Verse 27 of the same chapter, Luke chapter 23, says, Following him was a large crowd of people, including women who were mourning and wailing for him, which is Jesus, him which is Jesus. But check this out. It means that here is Jesus. Here is Simon of Cyrene with the cross, following Jesus. And behind them, a crowd of people crying. Meaning that they were behind Jesus, but also they were behind who? Simon of Cyrene. That's interesting. But now, following Jesus and following Simon of Cyrene, there was a large crowd of the people, including women who were mourning. Mourning meaning a cry of deep sadness. And wailing, wailing meaning a cry of despair. They were crying of sadness and of despair for Jesus. 
But they were following Jesus, yes, but at the same time following Simon of Cyrene. Behind Simon of Cyrene, there were people in despair and in sadness. And it's interesting to see how we all know that Jesus took the sacrifice, but we sometimes disregard the sacrifice of Simon of Cyrene. Sometimes we disregard the fact that the man took everything, took, took, sorry, not everything, but a big cross on his back and had a lot of people crying behind him. You know how it's hard to carry a heavy load when people are making noise? You see, when they have a um, heavyweight lifting contest, people, when the guy is focusing to lift up the heavyweight, people are quiet. And when he lifts it up and he lifts, and then he, he, he leaves it on the floor again, then they shout because there's victory. But imagine when he's lifting it up and there's so much noise around him that he can't focus because there's, there's a way to lift up those weights. Simon of Cyrene was in the same case. But funny enough, he could carry the cross, even with the noise. Funny enough, he could carry the cross. Interesting enough, not funny enough, but interesting enough, he could carry the cross, even with people mourning and waiting around him. Funny or interesting enough, he could carry the cross, even with sadness and despair being spoken and released in the atmosphere around him. He could. It all started by him being forced. Then he said, no, I am behind the great man. I'm carrying this for Jesus. Therefore, even if I was forced, I'm going to make it. This is what I say. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. I'm going to bring, accompany Jesus to Calvary. A lot of people leave like Simon of Cyrene. At first, it's not their choice. But with the time, the burden becomes a mission. With the time, the, le the heavy loads become a mission for them. Become a mission statement. Becomes a vision. Becomes a, I'm going to do it. Help Jesus get to that place. Because Jesus had a destination. And can you imagine without Simon of Cyrene, would Jesus have been crucified? We don't know. Maybe yes. Would, have, would it have been the same way? We don't know. Jesus needs Simon of Cyrene. People are going to find me strange for saying this, but Jesus needs Simon of Cyrene in this time. He needed him in the Bible. He needs one now. Sometimes at first it doesn't seem, it seems like you are being forcefully um, put into a place that you don't want to. I remember, me, uh, it was hard for me to. If you have to sing for God, if you have to do this for God, I'm like, eh, you, your Jesus thing, let, let me live my life. Until 2016, 17, God said, okay, son, now it's time for you to come back. Sometimes at first it's hard, but then you start to carry that burden. And then you realize that he says himself that his yoke is light. Then you realize that, oh, I carry the cross, but actually, wait, I'm, I'm not feeling it. What's going on? But the cross is there. Why? Because there is something. He was carrying the cross, but Jesus was taking the pain. 
He was carrying the cross, but Jesus was taking the heavy burden on him. He was helping Jesus, but Jesus was the one feeling the pain. Because the Bible is clear, he took all pains on him. Something is not heavy as you think. Let me tell you. It's not heavy as you think. Sometimes we think that it's taking the entire the entire pain of Jesus upon. No, it's not true. When we hold, when we carry that, Jesus is taking the pain. Jesus took the pain already. Sorry. I came with a message that is a little bit simple, but in, but particular. Serving is not always a burden. At first, it seems like a burden, just because you are not used to it. But as you get used to it, you understand. You have to understand that that lightness that you feel is not because the burden is not heavy anymore. It's because Jesus had already taken the, the, the heaviness out of it, or from it. He went to Calvary with Jesus, carrying the cross and supporting the cries of sadness and despair of his people. So why are we talking about that today? We gave some elements, but there's one element that I want to come up with. is the one of the choice. Because it seems like a lot of us, especially people from my age or even people older, think, think that Serving is always a choice or serving is always something that starts with a choice. Last week, we talked about the choice that condemned Jesus. It was the, the shot of people choosing another person. Of, uh, uh, um, sorry, instead of Jesus. Oh, sorry. Today, we're going to talk about the inner cry of the carrier of the cross, and we're going to continue next week. Last week, I said we're going to continue with another part. This is the one. Then next week, we're going to introduce something else again. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 26, it is to 28, it is written, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 25, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man in return, what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death. On, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So today we're going to talk about this only part and next week we're going to introduce the rest. The choice. Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus says, if anyone, if, there's a condition here, if anyone. It's not really a condition, but it's like, okay, if there's no one, it's okay too. It can be meaning that there's a choice behind it, or it's also meaning that we have the choice to come after him or no. He's telling us what happens if we come after him. He didn't say, you must come after me. Somebody will say, Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit is always a gentleman. Jesus is a gentleman. And it's true. Jesus did not force anybody to follow him. Jesus said, if you follow me, this is what happens. He didn't say, leave everything and follow me. He said, except to his disciples. A few of them. But in this case, he said, if you will follow me, if you come after me, deny your, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
But here, Simon of Cyrene, it seems like he didn't have this choice that Jesus gave the disciples. He did not. Because Jesus was alive and he gave the disciples, uh, the disciples the choice. But when he started to go to the cross, the choice was not given anymore. Jesus was alive. Jesus was teaching. Jesus was showing what the Father says to do. Was saying, when I will, when I will be gone, this is what you will do. Ah, ah, voici, voici. This is what you will do. He said it. But when the time came for him, for the Father to be glorified through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the choice was not there anymore. This is this. This is it. There are those times when the choice is not there anymore. We have to do something. We have to accept the condition and to be able to walk through with Jesus and get out of it. I won't say even we have to accept, but we have to be able to adapt to the condition and situation and be able to follow Jesus and get where we are supposed to go. Simon of Cyrene, if he was among the disciples, he, he would have been like, oh, I thought it was a choice. But no, it wasn't a choice in this case. God needed somebody to help Jesus. You know, in churches, we have this thing where we spend a lot of time talking, discussing, fellowshipping, laughing. But when it's time, when it's time to do serious work, it's time to do serious prayers, people think they have the choice. When it's time for Jesus to do serious things, not that fellowshipping is not a serious, but a serious thing, but when it's time for Jesus to deal with real things, we think we have the choice. The choice to take it or no. The choice to accept to serve or no. The choice to accept to do things or no. But Jesus is showing us here that when we are talking, okay, I give you the choice. But there are times when you need to do something. There is no way you can, like, there is a way for you to avoid. But if you avoid, who is going to do it? Jesus will have to find the Simon of Cyrene. That's what he did. Because Peter just before that had denied him three times. And all the other ones, I don't know where they were, they appeared back when Jesus was at the cross. They were not there to serve when Jesus needed to go to, 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 at the cross. Because in reality, the ones that were with him all the time uh, when he wasn't about to be crucified, we're not the one walking behind him, ex directly behind him when he was about to, to go to go uh, at the cross. And that is a, that pains me somewhere because I'm like, why? When Jesus is sweet, people are around, and yet it becomes a little bit difficult to serve. We have to look for somebody. We have to force somebody to do. No. Father, let it not be our portion anymore. We don't want that. We don't want that. God, help us not to be like that. We don't want to flee away when it's time for serious matter. Please help us. Simon of Cyrene he didn't have the choice. He was forced to come after Jesus and he had to deny himself and take up his cross and follow Jesus without any choice. So his free will was put to the side. Somebody will say his free will was put to the side a little while to fulfill God's will. And somebody will tell me, maybe this is not free will anymore. Or people will say, why are you saying this? Because, and, I'm, and, and the answer will be, because sometimes we think that 
We have the choice in everything with Christ. Listen, free will does not mean, having the free will does not mean having the choice all the time. Why? Because my free will is not for me, submitted to God. Who gave me the free will? God, right? He's the one giving it to me. So it's submitted to him. So if, if there comes a time when he needs me to do something, my will is not any important anymore. His will is. And the choice is not given to me. The decision belongs to him. The funny thing is that it sounds like a choice. When Jesus says, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself, carry up, take up his cross." And follow me. It sounds like a choice that is us to make. But Jesus then says. Let him deny himself. How come you come and give me a choice. And then you say. Deny, let him deny himself. It means that myself is not important. Anymore. Listen. When we decide to follow Jesus. Even if we are in those sweet times with Jesus, where he's teaching us, showing us the way, before the times become a little bit difficult and we have to do more serious things, we deny, he said, deny yourself. Meaning that even at that time, we have the choice to stay, but ourselves is denied, must be denied. Amen. So today I wanted to emphasize the fact that sometimes we think we have the choice. But actually, it's time for God's will to be done. The issue is that sometimes our choices can interfere with God's will. And we don't want this to happen. Not in New Beginning Ministries, not in our life, not for us. Let the will of God be over and surpass everything. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Father, please, let your grace be upon us. Give us the grace, Father God. Give us the grace to be able to do things for you. Give us the grace to be able to forget about ourselves a little bit. And especially in the time where you seriously need us to do something. Give us the grace. Give us the grace, Father. Father, give us that grace. There's a time when we, we have to stop, Father God, thinking that we always have the choice in everything. But we have to understand that your will surpasses our will. Amen. Give us the grace, Father God. Let be like Simon of Cyrene and let us accompany you into, the, into your mission until you can fulfill and glorify the Father again. In everything we do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. This was the end for this part. Next week, we do the other part. All right. Amen. Any, any comment? Mm. Me, I thought that, uh, but I like the elaboration around Simon, uh, the coming of Cyrene. I thought that they gave him the cross because he was... Um, he was uh, he looked stronger he was a black guy strong with muscles who could carry because mm. jesus was tired mm. and he was dragging and the crucifixion was also a way of uh, killing criminals mm -hmm. so the cross was not necessarily representing a uh, christian no the cross was the way they were killing all of these people by hanging them on a on a cross, so well Simon has to go by, and it's true. I like the study how you say that they impose that to him, and he has the woman wailing in the back. I never thought about all of this, so thank you for the teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and you. something you said 
about um, the fact that he was strong, a black man strong. This adds up another point that sometimes um, things are put upon us because we have the capacity to hold them, to carry them. Mm -hmm. It's not because, uh, it's not always because, you know, sometimes it will seem like it's a lot, but it's just because God gave us the capacity physically and spiritually, physically in this case, to hold some stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why the society sometimes put men and women in certain positions because they say men has the capacity to do this and women has the capacity to do that. And it's all about, uh, it's a lot about, you know, the physical aspect and the, the physical idea or stereotype that people have on men or women or whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That Amen. Be elaborated next week. So, Amen. I think we are done. Mm -hmm. I except there's a prayer point from this. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think that is the ability to accept service also mm -hmm. when we are needed. Like uh, mm -hmm. Simon Serin was needed to to reach the cross, to go all the way to Golgotha. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's just uh, accepting, serving when we are needed mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, finding it in our heart, mm -hmm. the time to serve. Because it's like uh, the Holy Spirit is bringing to my mind, like uh, Simon Peter, who mm -hmm. was running away and say, I don't have anything to do with this man. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Simon also, who didn't say a word, the Bible never said that he accepted or he disagreed or something like that. All mm -hmm. we know is he carried. He didn't say a word and he carried the cross. So mm -hmm. that we can accept, uh, like God prepare our heart to accept the service also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all, if it's a prayer point, it's that one. So. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary for an holy tribe and truth. We thank you. Be a sanctuary. Oh, Lord. Lord, prepare us to be sanctuaries. Prepare us to be Amen. servants. Prepare our hearts to accept the service in the times of need and in the times where you want us to do so. Lord, it's not always about when we want to do things, but it's more about your will and when you want to do things. Lord, remove from us any type of rebellion, any type of, of spirit that will stop us or any type of ideas that will Stop us from, from doing your will. Because we're in the time where your will is what needs to be done and what will make us advance. But help us more, please. We ask for grace because all those things, we can do it by ourselves sometimes. Sometimes ourselves, our flesh, our selfishness is so much that we can't. So Father God, please come and, can, come and surpass all that. Take over. Remove it. Change the garments upon our life in the name of Jesus. Remove, Father, the nonchalance and everything that, that is used in the spiritual remote, in our mind, in order to stop us from doing your work. For the cover us with the garment of, of service. Cover us with the garment, not of, remove the garment of slavery and cover us with the garment of service for you. Remove the garment, Father, of selfishness and cover us with the garment of, of service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So here we the end of the teaching. God bless you. Have a good night.